Hello, my name is Lindsay. I'm a registered nurse and a senior clinical trial educator at Toronto Memory Program. Today, we're going to be talking about understanding clinical trials in the context of Alzheimer's disease prevention and treatment. Toronto Memory Program was founded in 1996, and we are a multidisciplinary community-based medical facility specializing in the diagnosis and treatment of Alzheimer's disease. We also have the largest clinical trial program for Alzheimer's disease in Canada. This is Dr. Sharon Cohen, and she is our medical director and a Canadian trained behavioral neurologist and former speech language pathologist. She's also an assistant professor at the University of Toronto Division of Neurology, as well as the graduate department of speech language pathology. Current medications that are approved for Alzheimer's disease that your doctor can prescribe can only provide a modest symptom benefit, but they're not targeting the underlying cause or the pathology of the disease. We need something better. Toronto Memory Program is focused on participating in clinical trials, which are research studies that are looking at new treatments to actually prevent, slow down, or stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Clinical trials are research studies that are conducted with volunteers to determine whether treatments are safe and effective. Without clinical trials, our pharmacy shelves would be bare and there would be no treatments, prevention, or cure for Alzheimer's disease. Every medication that you are currently prescribed, that you're currently taking or will take in the future has at one point been through the clinical trial process. All of our studies are highly regulated to ensure patient safety. So patient safety is central to all stages of clinical trials. All new medications start in a lab. They administer the medication to neurons, which are brain cells um, in the lab, in the Petri dish under the microscope. And then they test the medication on animals, monkeys and mice to prove what the medication does. If we want to do the study in humans, then it needs to be submitted to the FDA if we are in the United States or the European Medicine Agency if we are in Europe. In order to test the medications in Canada, it has to be approved by Health Canada. Then it is submitted to the Independent Ethics Review Board. They are the patient's advocate and they approve that informed consent form that contains all of the information that you need to know about the study to decide if you want to participate. And then the studies are hand selected by Dr. Sharon Cohen, our medical director, and we conduct them at our site. All clinical trials go through three phases before a medication can be approved and come out to the market to prove its effectiveness. In phase one, they're looking at a new medication on a small group of people to evaluate its safety and tolerability. In phase two, the medication is given to a larger group of people. They're continuing to do safety assessments, but they're also now looking at different doses or for signs of efficacy. And then phase three is the final phase to see once and for all if the medication is actually effective and they continue to do safety monitoring as well. So mostly anybody is eligible to participate in a clinical trial. Um, individuals living with mild cognitive impairment or dementia, healthy volunteers without dementia and their loved ones are needed. You uh, are basically eligible if you are English speaking are between the ages of 50 to 90 and have a study partner. So this is somebody that knows you very well and that could accompany you to some of the study visits. There are two types of Alzheimer's trials. So we have treatments that are aimed at reducing symptoms. These treatments provide a more significant symptom benefit than the medications that are currently approved. And we also have treatments aimed at slowing or stopping the progression of the disease. These treatments can be administered in different ways. So as an IV or intravenous infusion, as oral tablets or as other types of injections. Participating in a clinical trial can provide you with early access to the latest diagnostics and therapeutics, which are not otherwise available or they're not covered by OHIP. So through clinical trials, you can get access to this at no cost. 
Participating in clinical trials also provides regular access to a dedicated and expert care team. And there is frequent monitoring and support throughout the study and patients find that they tend to do better while participating in the clinic in clinical trials compared to the general public. Participating in clinical trials also provides hope for those living with Alzheimer's disease as well as their families and for future generations. There is no cost to participate in a clinical trial. Every clinical trial has an informed consent form that explains the possible costs or payments that you may receive. There usually is a small stipend and expenses that might be covered by the sponsor of the study. So there is a process before participating in a research study. Our research team will review your medical history and medications to make sure that there are uh, no major health issues or that your medications don't conflict with the study medicine. And we may also arrange for cognitive testing. Once we determine it is safe for you to participate and you're eligible, we would schedule a screening visit. Typically, it would involve about a four or five hour day at our clinic. We will review that informed consent form with you. Uh, we'll administer cognitive testing. You'll have some blood work done and a physical and neurological exam. If your score is too high or too low from the cognitive testing, you may not be eligible for the study. We want to make sure that you fit into the group that is most likely to have a benefit from the study medication. Then if you are a good fit, you would move on to get a brain MRI and other diagnostic testing or biomarker testing for the disease. Once determined that you are eligible and safe to enter the study based on that screening process and all of those steps, you would undergo the treatment phase. This is where you will receive either the medicine or the placebo. There will be various visits which differ depending on the study. And all of them are on site at our clinic, unless you're going for a procedure like the brain scan, a brain MRI, um, or another brain type of brain scan. Those are done off site as we don't have the machines at our clinic. During the study, you will be very closely monitored and we are required to be on call for you 24 seven for the duration of the study. So I mentioned earlier that a big benefit of participating in clinical trials is that you can get access to diagnostic testing. And there are three types of tests that you might get access to through clinical trials. So first we have a PET scan. A PET scan measures the level of abnormal proteins that are associated with Alzheimer's disease called amyloid or tau. And these are the hallmark proteins for the disease. These proteins can also be measured by performing a lumbar puncture. So this involves using a local anesthetic and it's a very routine procedure that we do at our clinic where a special needle is used to take a small sample of spinal fluid from the lower back. In clinical trials, um, they also might test for um, abnormalities in plasma, amyloid, and tau in the blood work. So trials can last anywhere between one to four years, and visits range from biweekly to once every three months, depending on the trial. Trials may offer a stipend to cover transportation costs, such as gas, mileage, and transit fares, and certain trials may also pay for airfare or hotels. So some possible risks of participating in a study. It is possible that the treatment in the trial might not help you, but even if the treatment does not work, we learn more and more from every study and it brings us closer to something that does work. Also, most medications have potential side effects. You might have a side effect from the trial treatment. If you picked up a Tylenol from the shelf in your local pharmacy and you looked at the back of the label, there's a list of potential side effects. And safety measures are in place to monitor for these. If you were, and if you were not tolerating the medication, we would tell you to stop. You may also have frequent testing or blood draws. 
and you may need to set aside time for participation. Travel is permitted during the study. There are some studies also with snowbird policies depending on where you travel and if you travel for longer periods of time. So somebody does have to accompany you in most clinical trials to the study visit. This is called a study partner. So this is a close family member or a friend that knows you very well, that should have frequent enough contact with you. They're expected to have uh, regular interactions with you so that they can speak to things like your activities of daily living. Um, so things like banking, cooking, shopping, and provide meaningful information about that. They should also be familiar with recent events that you have attended. And they should also know you well that they can notice changes in your condition and behavior. Will you definitely get the medication? So when there is no proven treatment to use as a comparison, researchers compare the potential treatment to a placebo. So this is an inactive substance. It has no treatment value. It might look, it looks like the medication. It might smell like the medication. If it's a tablet, it could taste like the medication. You can't tell the difference, but it doesn't have that active, that same active ingredient. And they use these placebos to act as a control and they compare those on the medication to those on the placebo to see if the medication is actually effective. Most clinical trials are also double blinded. This means that neither I know or the study doctor knows or you know if you're on that active treatment or placebo. And this is to eliminate bias. So for example, if the doctor who was following you over the course of the study, if they knew that you were on that active treatment, it could impact the way that they might score you on the cognitive test. So it's to eliminate that bias. And while we don't know which one you're on, we do know the ratio or likelihood you would be on one or the other. And that is specific to every clinical trial. It could differ. Also, many clinical trials offer open label extensions if the medication is found to have a potential benefit. So this is where you are offered access to the active treatment after this double blind treatment period has been completed. So the majority of medications, um, the majority of trials allow you to stay on standard treatments for Alzheimer's disease if you are already taking one of these medications, galantamine, rivastigmine, dinepazil, and memantine. And your current medications will be reviewed against the study protocol to ensure that it is safe for you to participate. Most medications should be stable for a certain amount of time before participating in a trial. And we ask that you advise the study team if you are planning on making any changes to your medications. Clinical trial participation is completely voluntary. So you can decide to stop at any point and for any reason. Also, the sponsor of the study or the study doctor can remove you at any time for any reason. Here is our contact information if you are interested in learning more about a specific opportunity that might be of interest to you or for a loved one, we encourage you to reach out to us. Our phone number and email is on this slide. Thank you for listening.